Hi, I'm welcoming you to Riding Tiger with Arijit, and I have got an amazing guest today. But before I begin, I would love to give an introduction about the concept called Riding Tiger with Arijit Bhattacharya. So when you start your venture, your business, your own career, usually it starts with a lot of, lot of risk. People who start their own venture, they are risk takers. It's not easy to take that kind of risk. When they start their venture, they usually adopt a cub. And that small tiger, when they hold in their hand, they usually feed it in an intention that it will eventually grow big and strong. And of course, it will become stronger than the person who has adopted itself. So that's your tiger. When it becomes big, that business is becoming stronger, faster than you. But you have a risk. When you start riding on the top of that tiger, now the tiger is strong enough to probably kill you. So if you stop, it is going to kill you. That's the fear that you have always in your mind, which means when you run your business, you just can't stop that journey. It's a never ending journey as an entrepreneur until unless you take the liberty to probably take an exit from that particular risk zone. Some people take that leap. Some people take a risk of probably stopping that particular journey and then start another journey in their life. Even though they do it, they do on the top of the tiger once again. Those people who call them as serial entrepreneurs. So as a person, you need to understand how to feed your tiger properly. And that feeding material is called money, which means as an entrepreneur, you need to understand the art and science of feeding your business. You cannot overfeed it. If you do that, probably your business becomes a little bit of slow. If you learn how to feed it properly, it will give you an amazing lifelong journey, which is remarkable and probably others will remember you as a tiger rider. So we have a person like this called Michael and Michael is doing that same. I know for sure because we know each other for quite a long number of I would say years now. And Michael is doing it successfully for a couple of years. And he is doing an amazing work, which is completely a different vertical and dimension. And he's doing it worldwide. He's not doing it in a particular only one country. And I'm blessed to introduce you, my friend, our Michael, to the audience. Michael, for the sake of audience, I know what all you do. But for the sake of audience, could you please tell our audience what you do and what are the kind of disruption you're making in planet Earth, please? It will be a pleasure. And first of all, thank you for having me and for explaining how to ride a tiger. You know, I am living in the middle of Europe. There are no tigers in here. And just now I learn and it's quite interesting. So what I do, I said all the time that I'm just a simple man with simple aim. And the same is to build wasteless world for all. And what I do, I teach companies and businesses how to prevent waste happen. And I'm so happy that it resonates with so many that it reach up to the level of governments and United Nations and European Commission. And to do that, I created something which is called Industry 5.0. Right. And some tools and so on. So I am the founder of Industry 5.0. And as Arijit said, I am not doing it only in one country. At the moment, I have 102 countries uh, to run through the network of Industry 5.0 ambassadors. And India is one of the leading ones. So I am happy that we can talk together. And I'm happy to be friend with Arijit because he's right. We know each other for a while and our work resonates. Uh, together and this is exactly why I'm so happy to be there. Brilliant. Michael, uh, I have an interesting question for you. When you talk about Industry 5.0 as a, as a disruption that you are doing and uh, the kind of 102 countries you are impacting, if you kindly share maybe one or two test cases of your implementation factors, it will be great for people to understand because your work is not a small work. So if you can share maybe one or two test cases to the audience, it will be amazing, please. I will share uh, 
I will share them, but as, as well, before I do, I will share something different. Please. I will share with the audience how to prevent waste happen because not everyone does understand what is wasting. So I will use my business card. So please imagine that we are standing in one room and I am used to give you my business card. So I hand it over to you. You take it. Everything is fine. But let's erase this memory and we meet again for the first time. Just now we are walking to each other and in the middle, somebody plays completely new stainless steel garbage bin. Okay, so I come to you, I fall down and my, gar and, and my business card fall in the garbage bin. I do not have any second, but you for whatever reason, you would like to have it. So we look inside, we see it's completely empty, new, shiny. And you said, okay, I will take it, Michael. So I will take it out, check it whether it's not dirty. I apologize with you hand it over to you. If you take it from me in Czech Republic, you take with that a penalty right for 200,000 US dollars. That will be the most expensive business card in your life. The reason for that is very simple and it's very similar in almost all the countries. It is the waste legislation which says, among others, that waste is something which uh, it's placed on a location dedicated to waste storage. So garbage bin is a location dedicated to waste storage. In this law and legislation, it's not says whether it's new, dirty, clean, live, whether it's made from gold, platinum, no. If it's land there, it's the, it's the end of a product and it's begun with the life of a waste. And just now, we, to imagine it better. So here is the edge of the garbage bin. And here is how the waste creation works. Here is a product, here is waste. You see nothing happened with the product. And what I do, I generally catch in the middle. So I never let a product reach the stage of a garbage. And this is so-called waste prevention. So if I catch it here before the edge, it's a product. What you do with it, it's up to you. You can put it in your book, make a bookmark, put it in your, it's your decision. But if it's here, it will become immediately cost for you because you have to pay for waste management. And right now to the cases. So for example, I was standing on, a, on in, in the warehouse of second largest distribution of uh, fruits and vegetables in my country. And there is a coming truck which was refused by the chain store uh, buyer. The truck, the truck was full with radish and he rejected because the leaves on the radish has not been green enough. Mm -hmm. The only thing which the client does, he take every crate and throw it immediately in a garbage container with no thinking because he needs the crates. He does not need the radish. I was standing then and really crying. So I asked him whether I can take one of the crate with me mm -hmm. to test what I can do with it. So I took it. I make two dishes out of it. I make a smoothie out of it, just the radish. I did not add anything. Then I cut it, I freeze it and, and so on. I returned back to him and I said, stop wasting it. If you get refusal, I will connect you with this, 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 guys. And you know, when I was there two years ago, the volumes which he generate, he has five distribution centers. In one distribution center, every single one, he generate per month 400 metric tons. Wow. So he has five. Imagine the kind of, kind of help that you did for that particular business. And, and I was there one month ago. He is on 100 tons. And he is much more profitable, of course, because he cut a big cost, cost thing. The second example, so you can, in, he can immediately implement. There was no cost related to the implementation, just the connection outside of his scope of business, True. which he was not able to do before. I teach him how to do, and we did it. So this is one example. The second one, it's quite interesting. It's related 
to so-called process waste, because in Industry 5.0, we understand four types of waste, physical, social, urban, and process waste. This is why you can apply it everywhere. And the process waste was quite interesting story because I was working at a, at a steel, uh, not steel making, but uh, stamping, steel stamping generally, production facility, 30 years old. And they started a new project or they would like to start a new project and they need additionally crane inside the factory. They have many, but they need a crane with a higher bearing capacity so it can move more than 10 tons. And they discuss it in the in the morning a production meeting, general manager, all the managers over there. And I I was and they asked me whether I have some crane because time time to time I have similar things like used cranes and so on. And I asked them why do you need it? And they explained it to me. I stopped them and said no. I listen to you, but why do you need it if you have it? They said no, we don't. I don't know why, but day before I went through the factory and I made picture of every single crane to see the weight. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. And one of the cranes, which was in the back of the building has 15 tons and they need 12. So I said, you have it. And all the people there, including the general manager said, no, we don't. So I take the entire group, 20 people, go in the production and show them. And they say with this one minute information from me, they say 50,000 euro in one minute. And this is a waste prevention. We have to generally, we have to implement even a new name because you know, Roy, return of investment. You have to invest, you get it back. But in industry 5.0 projects, and that's interesting, you usually do not need to invest because you utilize what you already have. Yeah. So we have implemented a name of so-called zero ROI, which does not mean that you will never get the money back. This means you don't invest to get the benefit, or even in this case of the crane, we have introduced reverse ROI, because you invested long time ago, but you forgot about this investment, and just now you just utilize it. So this is just two of many examples. I have over 350, projects we have saved over 1 million metric tons of waste uh, of products to become waste already so uh, and these are just few but i will add one more which even you don't know probably because it's very fresh in industry 5.0 everyone has in his office a printer right everyone <laughs> printing a lot of papers but do you know that there exists a machine where you put your printed document inside and in three minutes white paper will be on the other side it's your in-house recycling machine and it can do up to i think eight thousand pages per day saving 92 percent of water because they don't use almost any wall and in three minutes you recycle your own generally your own paper, which did not become waste because you will not put it for the fir first in a, in a garbage bin to take it out and to recycle. No, you will put it in the machine. And what is interesting, uh, if you eliminate or erase information, there are different grades of security. The highest grade worldwide, it's called P7. Uh, but this machine, the producer, uh, is considering to even ask for P8 to be created because he generally turn the paper into fibers, completely delete everything what is uh, colored and make just a print white paper or it's not completely white because it's re recycled but it's almost white. So, and there are many technologies from in almost all the industries. So this is why Industry 5.0 is so booming and this is why we are in so many destinations. So, sorry, not two, but three, but... This is, this is amazing, this is really amazing. The kind of work that you are doing, at least, if the industry people understand this, it's not about only the reverse ROI. I would call it accelerating the ROI, which probably they have never ever thought of. And uh, not only that, you are helping the planet 
at least I'm blessed to be in your friend list as a friend who is helping the planet to at least optimize it. I was talking to a group, I would love to mention them. Uh, how can I not mention them at least when we are talking regarding sustainability factors? I was talking to one group in one part of Asia. These guys were a group of artists and uh, they wanted to save their, their mountain. There was a mountain basically, and there was a soda factory which needed uh, to generate soda definitely in their factory. And they wanted to kill that mountain because uh, as you know, as a process, if they don't have alternative sources of generating uh, the, the, uh, the materials which is needed for soda, which is uh, like, it's very, very difficult to do it. So they have to kill the natural resources. And these artists, they created a so long, you can say a propaganda and they, they successfully saved that mountain, but eventually the factory uh, became a, a, a dormant, like they couldn't run it. But these group, they understood that if they shut down a factory, that means it's a loss for the people who are working inside the factory. So they started finding out the solutions through which the factory owner can generate the alternative source which they know don't need to kill the mountain and then create a sustainability factor. They successfully did that as well. So when we talk about such kind of uh, big, big vibration, which is happening several different places in Mother Art, I personally feel that we should bring out these stories to the world. We should talk about this instead of talking which unicorn is raising what kind of amount of money as an investment capital right these guys are hero like you are a hero who is doing amazing cool stuff so i have a question for you when you started early like in your early days i know your story so i have that probably that i i can dare to ask you this kind of question i would say that so when you started your life in the initial time how difficult was it to uh share it to someone that what is the kind of concept you are working on because the concept that you're talking, don't throw the materials, don't waste existing things that you have, rather give it to me, I will show you the path through which you can make, generate, help more things. It's not easy to convince people. So if you can share what happened when you started, how difficult uh, was it to share this concept I, with people, please? I have, I have one advantage. And this is that I started with the age of 42. So I have 23 years of business experience. And because I'm a logistician and the people call me strange logistician because I do uh, accept and face very special projects, which everyone rejects and I can do it successfully. So I have the easy, easier way to enter the general managers, let's call it so, in the factories. But on the other hand, because nobody in the world ever tried to prevent waste happen on industrial scale. Everything what I did was a blue ocean project. So it has many advantages, some disadvantages. The advantages are you don't have a competitor. Until now, I'm doing it for nine years. Until now, now there is no competitor who do it. So I receive a lot of prizes. Uh, I'm the CEO of the year in waste prevention and whatever. It's easy because I'm the only one. So. Generally, these prices are nice, but what? Hold on, hold on, hold uh, on, hold on, Michael. The reason I asked you this question because I wanted you to answer the answer you gave me. Write that answer. Some of those startups, they usually feel that if I am not starting in my college days, probably I'm missing a lot. Some of the people they feel that age is a factor. If I'm starting in my probably in my forties. I'll never succeed. It's a difficult journey. It's a difficult path. I cannot start at this age. I'm already settled down. And that's the reason I asked you this question. So if you look at Michael, yeah. the point that he started is mid of the career. He took the risk of again, riding the kind of tiger, which doesn't exist. So he created that and he could have done it better because he already got the experience. He already knows exactly. the market. 
He already knows the people. You name it exactly right. Uh, and I like the I like the idea that it was really a tiger which is growing. And it's you know, I work for a long time in corporations and so on. When we open a new country, we need half half a year, six months, one year to open one country. With the Industry 5.0 network, I need 17 months to open 102 countries. Really? I never expected so the the tiger can really grow up fast and at the same time we it, it, it's the same like with the time i am not being haunted by the time time is my friend i don't wear any watches here in my office in my entire watch uh, in my entire office uh, there are two clocks which without batteries in here so uh, they show 12 all the time and of course we have it in mobile phone and, and in computer but i do not i do not need it because i know when we have half an hour, I know where the half an hour will come. But uh, I would like to say to the to the new entrepreneurs, to the new people, you don't need some specific age. You don't need generally some specific education. I do not have university education. And the only time which I spent on universities is by delivering keynotes and speeches on universities. But I never studied there. And what is interesting, you even don't need money frequently because the only thing which you need is your passion. True. And you need a lot of endurance because if you have an aim, my advice to everyone who said, how would I fulfill my dream? First, first reply, wake up. Yep. Because if you do not wake up, you will dream your dream, but you will not live in your dream. So you have to wake up. If you do so, you have to start working and you have to be really have the endurance to aim the to to follow the aim. And this is important to say it shouldn't be financial aim. If you say I would like to be a millionaire, it's easy to make a deal which is one million worth, no matter what the currency is. It's not difficult, really. But at the same time, so easy it is to lose it at the same time. You get million, it's a way. So uh that's not the real aim. My aim is to build a wasteless world. That's the aim which I know I can follow. I even know that I will not live in this wasteless world, but my daughter and the other generation will do. And that's why I do it every single day, 14 days an hour, seven days a week. I am working towards the same. Because everything what I do, riding on my electric unicycle, being in a factory, delivering keynotes, having the pleasure to talk to you everything is in this one direction so you have to be able to follow it and this is in the passion you have to love your work and if you do you will succeed yeah it may maybe it will not take one day it will take one month one year but you will succeed because if you deliver product from the work you love the product will be loved and this is the difference to the mass production, which you get a lot of things. There is no feeling inside. There is nothing. So this is the difference. So let's do it the way I already described it. Ride the tiger and really be kind to the tiger and he will be kind to you. He will even share his food with you yep. because the animals can do. The people don't do that. Some of them just keep it for them. Look at Fortune 500 list. What did... Why are they, why I, why they reach it? Because they have money and, and what? True. And for the audience, let me tell you something which is interesting. Even in fact, I'm impressed by the way uh, Michael is doing to the world. I would call it to the world because he believes that when he travels because of so many reasons, he don't, he can't ride in a, maybe in a bicycle, but he rides in his electric vehicle and he's riding it because he don't want to waste petroleum. He don't want to impact the world. And that's the kind of mindset. It's a mindset which you need to have. It's not about what is your status, how you are moving, what are the kind of dresses that you are wearing. In fact, people like us, we really want to help the world because we already probably wasted a lot and that's the reason you can see that per millisecond 
there is an iceberg which is melting. And because of that, we are facing heat in our environment. You need to nowadays put an AC if you are in an Asian country. Even in Europe, I was talking to one of my friends just last night. She got a baby recently. She is telling me that it is very difficult nowadays to, to stay in the cities because heat is really, really difficult for them. So it's changing. I think we should wake up and understand what we are doing to the world. And we should be able to understand the kindness Mother Earth is giving us back. We need to learn that lesson. With this note, I have a last question for Michael. What is your future goal, Michael? You have been doing amazing work, but if I can have the liberty to understand what is your future goal, which probably can impact thousands, probably millions of lives, please. Uh, the aim is all the time remain the same. So to reach it, we have to give the tools to everyone in the world. Eight billion people have to should have the access to the information and to the tools that waste can be prevented. Because the people don't have it, because the waste industry and some other players, we, I call them giants, they push us that we must create the waste, but that's not true. And let me show to your audience the vehicle which you spoke about, because many people think that uh, when I'm riding electric, I have to have a car. I am not rich enough to buy electric car, but you know, this is my vehicle. This is electric unicycle. This device is, ride, is being ride, ridden like this. And you move. You just, you just, um, you just uh, generally you just transfer your your balance to the feet or to the uh, toes and you write generally this device just to add it can go 50 kilometers per hour in a speed and it can go 100 kilometers on a single charge and this is three years old the newest one can go 100 kilometers in a speed and 350 kilometers on a single charge and I have on this device, or on similar, because I'm riding for seven years, I have 60,000 kilometers wow. on this. Wow. And because it improved my body core, very intense, I was never for seven years, I wasn't a single day ill. And I like off-road riding, I like this stuff. So if I go for a speed ride, I have a full face Helmet, if I go for a city ride, which is slow just to go home or to the office, I don't have it. I have only gloves all the time. But um, and, and this is the change, because if you think about going clean, and I know right now there are big subsidies in India for turning rickshaw, not rickshaws, tuk-tuks and similar to electric and even support the rickshaws with electric and so on. So this is the right way, because this is something what we already have. We have the electric engines, but why should I have a car to one ton to move my 80 kilo? No, it's not necessary. So I don't use it. I use this device and this is my clean electric ride. And I would like to, when you come to Czech Republic, be sure you will get a lesson from me. So how 100%. to ride it. 100%. I would love to, love to, uh, probably experience that, even though actually I did that in Singapore, not that kind of device, it is a different one, which has got uh, a place where you can hold it. Uh, it's like a monocycle uh, kind of concept. And uh, I know, I know. That's, that's brilliant, that's actually brilliant. In fact, for all the audience, to be very honest, if you don't know me, even I ride normal bicycle, not an electric one even. I ride it on my own because I want to protect the environment. We have done enough mess for it. I go to exactly. the nearby villages, I plant trees, which I probably don't show in social media. It's not necessary to do that. If I'm doing something good for the mother nature, I don't need to create a propaganda for this, right? But people like Michael, who is actually making disruption, I personally felt that we should talk to each other so that at least these stories should come up to the world. And a lot of many people must connect to Michael. Michael is pretty open, I'm sure, in his LinkedIn profile. Kindly, if you want to add him, want to connect him, Feel free to send him a soft message. 
and then ask what you want to do with Michael and his brilliant ecosystem that he has created. Once again, Michael Rada, and he is from Czech Republic. Not only that, he is making a disruption with Industry 5.0 as the brilliant execution that he is doing for the entire industry. So feel free to connect him, communicate with him, and probably make the world a better place for the future generation. Thank you so much for watching us. Thank you so much for connecting. Michael, you want to say something? Yes, please. Before we end, just let me say, dear audience, please let your time be free of waste and wasting in all its forms. Stay safe and free, because this all is important for you to live meaningful life. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Pleasure, Michael. Thank you so much for coming and sharing the brilliant things that you are doing. Thank you. Thank you.